Wheels Up Miners, Locotech has invited us to Washington, D.C. for an unveiling event for their upcoming hardware. Let's jump on the road. Saturday afternoon, I arrived in Washington, D.C., and I was invited by the Logotech team for a product unveiling event. And to be honest with you, I felt this event really was for two purposes. The first one was brand exposure, and the second one was brand legitimacy when it came down to their product offerings. So the team at Logotech rented out for an hour and a half this really nice, I don't even want to call it an office suite. It was this phenomenal place for a small gathering i mean it was really cool it was on like a 12th floor of this office building you went up in the elevator and it had pool tables and you know this bar top area it had a fireplace it had this like tabletop meeting area uh, it had foosball tables this nice like the view was incredible like all windows all around it it was a really nice setup especially for a small gathering and that's exactly what it was it was under 15 people and it was a majority of youtubers you had people like tech hustler there you had uh crypto mining insider you had chump change xd you had geek of all trades serpent x tech DJ Mines, and finally Mark from Coastal Crypto Mining. And there were a number of other people that were invited that were not able to make it, as this was something that was pretty last minute, within a few weeks of this past weekend. So we, as miners and content creators, had an entire hour to play around with, well, this guy. And what is it? Well, it's a 3D printed case with my logo on it. But in all honesty, it's what's inside of here that was really a lot of fun. So we had the opportunity to check out this custom built board. It was a proof of concept board that uh, was a Locotech board and it had on it one total tile is what it was. It was one chip out of 256 that would be on their hash blade. Remember the hash blade? Logotech talked about the hash blade forever ago and it came into question because the efficiency was just so good nobody could believe it well that's what the, we were there for we were there for that legitimacy that brand exposure and well inside of that little usb case was that board and that tile there we were we could go ahead and put it to the test and these little cases were these usb devices that could plug into a laptop which is exactly what we played with for over an hour and it was a minor at the end of the day. That's exactly what it was. They had one of these boards for every single person there and we were able to hook them up to these laptops and on the laptops, it, it, nothing was masked, nothing was hidden. It was fully transparent and I give kudos to the Locotech team. We were able to go ahead and on there launch an executable and in that executable, we could set our pool, our wallet address, username, password information and hit start. And what that would do, that executable, is it would go ahead and create a batch file and you'd start that batch file because this was on Windows. This was how we were testing it out. But it was plain and simple. You could open that batch file and there wasn't much to it. It was exactly what you expected. It was the miner, it was the pool address and all the additional information. And the miner was actually pretty cool. 
Their miner was a custom built miner that they built exclusively for these devices called Stormbreaker. Pretty much, you know, these guys are from Norway, Stormbreaker from Norse mythology. And that's exactly kind of how they called it and what they called it. And you'd click on that batch file and the Stormbreaker uh, miner would go ahead and kick off and start off and you could watch it hashing. And it wasn't like this insane amount of hash rate coming out of this miner. I mean, this was one of 256 chips that would be on the hash blade. So it was doing right around 480 hashes and it worked really, really well. And we had an absolute blast as a group of miners having the opportunity to dissect this as much as we could, talk about it as much as we could, ask questions about it as much as we could. And it really helped. It helped to kind of give us confidence in the Locotech brand, as well as showing the legitimacy that this type of chip did exist and did perform exactly as they advertised. So then in the last half hour of our time, we had an hour and a half uh, in this space uh, ben went ahead and gave a presentation and it was a very business savvy presentation, talked about Logotech, um, showed uh, pictures and titles and information on all the different employees of the company, as well as more detailed information on the hash blade. And we wrapped up that conversation with actually doing a Zoom call with their ASIC designer, the guy that came up with all of this craziness, this magic, the wizard behind the crazy efficiency. And he was kept anonymous uh, to protect him. And, and I get it 100%, you know, uh, but uh, it gave us an opportunity as a bunch of YouTubers and miners to ask this guy questions. And well, what did we learn about the hash blade? All right. So I took a whole bunch of notes on the hash blade and I'm going to bounce all over the place, but let's jump into it. So the hash blade itself has 256 of the chips that we tested in our little proof of concept board uh, that we talked about there. So 256, one of them ends up being the microcontroller to manage everything that we saw. In addition to that, this device will have a six or eight pin right on the back of it, providing the power, which will be about 145 watts directly to the hash blade. And the communication will go directly over the PCI slot. Now, the nice thing is the PCI slot on these hash blades, it doesn't need anything crazy. It can run right off of an X1. Well, what does that mean? Like, where do our heads go as miners? Well, let's go first to risers. You could run this with risers, which is pretty badass. So you could have a whole bunch of hash blades with risers. Uh, you could have a riser, you know, off of your traditional desktop computer if you needed to, if you were out of space. Or where I go is I could take an eight GPU server case and I could slot eight of these hash blades in them and then run it as normal. Now, right now it does, you, it does require Windows to be installed on it because you're launching that batch file. But I did talk with Ben one-on-one -on -one, and down the road, their hope is to have some type of Linux bootable OS. So you have Linux with your application on, on top of it in order to provide more stability versus Windows. Because let's be honest, Windows is not super minor friendly. Something like Linux, lightweight and reliable would be awesome. So these hash blades themselves, they're going to be just under two um, giga hash at 145 watts. And something crazy that we saw was the cooling or the lack there of cooling. The hash blade and these chips have no cooling that you visibly can see. Based off the way that the boards are designed, it's almost like one giant heat pipe keeping it cool. And because the entire thing only uses 145 watts, it's not 145 watts isn't focused on one die. It's over 256 chips. So it's spread out. So there's no heat sink. There's no thermal paste. There's no putty. There's no fans. There's no nothing, which is pretty crazy. So and that kind of led me to some of my questions for their ASIC designer. Uh, then when we had a chance to talk about it is like, hey, because that there's no none of that, none of that cooling available, if I was to give it better cooling, would it provide better hash rate or lower watts? And the answer was actually no, that microcontroller is actually balancing things out. Now I did say, hey, if I was to take this thing and like put it in immersion and, and um, you know, would it technically perform better? And he did, they did say it would. So I'm curious if in the future we have the ability to adjust like voltage and frequency because that six to eight pin can 100% 
you know, handle more than 145 watts. So maybe there's potential to overclock these or a third party firmware comes out and you can crank these suckers up, which would be pretty badass. So that being said, on top of that, these hash blades and some of the technology behind these chips, some future potential with these is actually AI and that's actually on the horizon. It is, it is on their roadmap that a, you'd have a physical separate hash blade, so a separate product offering, but all the same similar technology that would be able to do AI. So imagine you could buy eight of these, it would be a different product offering, as I said before, but super similar, and you could do AI rendering work with these or AI compute with these. So the chip technology does not end at um, script mining. They, like I, I even picked their brain about like, hey, could we expect maybe like a Bitcoin miner in the future or, and that's how we kind of got into that AI side of things. So it was really cool to learn that there was a ton of flexibility with this device. And this was kind of just kicking things off. Now you couldn't take one and repurpose it. They, they said that it would, there would be a few different tweaks and changes. So you would have to expect different product offerings. All right, so what is their timeline of these? Well, right now they're in the pre-order stage. They do not have to have a set amount of pre-orders. That was something we discussed with them. Uh, it does help the more you have, uh, the more it helps out with the foundry and getting these pushed up uh, to be manufactured. But their expectation is Q3, Q4 for delivery, the second half of 2024 to get delivery of these hash blades. So we're talking under 12 months currently. All right, so where does that leave us? Our final thoughts on this. So two things, they wanted the brand exposure. Well, they got it, well done and they wanted brand legitimacy and they got that as well. We physically got to see the tile working and the chip working as advertised. The next level of legitimacy is really going to be getting a hash blade in my hands so I can plug it into my desktop computer or into a server case and actually start hashing with it and be able to show here's my hash rate and here are the total watts. That's kind of the stage two of this and based off my conversation with their team, by the way, really cool three guys that we got a chance to meet with, um, that's their game plan. Their game plan is to get these hash blades in the hands of some of these YouTubers that were there in order to create content on them and show the performance and the watts. Now the real big thing comes down to is how this hash blade is gonna stack up against the competition in the second half of 2024. It's gonna be hard. We're talking about just under two giga hash when it comes down to our script mining performance at 145 watts. Now, the 145 watts is really what this device has going for it. The performance is a little lackluster. And what I mean by that is the device itself, the performance to watt ratio is amazing. Where the challenge comes in and where the questionability comes in off that hash rate is really price. The hash blade is priced at $2,000. So for $2,000, you get two giga hash. And it's pretty much like leaving two light bulbs on really uh, at 145 watts. It's, it's pretty much close to nothing. Now, there's no other really miners out there that are this efficient when it comes down to script mining. Any mining really, I mean, geez, two giga hash at 145 watts, it's, it's absolutely outside the norm. It's absolutely outside of the industry when it comes down to, to just performance to watt ratio. I get it 100%. But where we as miners go in this situation is, okay, what is it going to cost me to beat out the L7? Or what is the L9 going to be when that thing releases? Who knows? Because we're going to talk about hash rate and think about hash rate. But where this thing strives is really the watts. This is a perfect device to slap in a machine. And I know DJ Mind said it best. It was like, man, two giga hash on 145 watts. This would be the perfect solo mining device. And I get it. I mean, that would be awesome. Uh, two giga hash, 145 watts. Everybody should have one of these in their PC, right? But there's a lot of potential for more. There's potential for buying boatloads of these and really building out a farm for a very, very, very small fraction of the watts, which is your biggest operating expense, is electric. So what do I think about the Locotech hash blade? Well, I'm gonna keep my thoughts and feelings to myself for right now until I get my hands on the hash blade, but the proof of concept device that they gave us, which we ended up having to drill this out, by the way, it's like falling apart. We ended up having to drill out the chips in order to be safe so that that technology could not get shared. What do I think about this and the proof of concept? 
Well, I think it's badass and it performs exactly the way Locotech said and advertised it would. Well guys, that's gonna wrap things up for today. I did a boatload of rambling. I wanted to share everything I learned about my time in Washington DC with the Locotech team taking a look at their proof of concept hardware. I'm excited to see where the hash blade goes. I'm excited to get my hands on one in early Q1 or Q2 of next year, and I'll bring it directly to you guys. Well, if you guys wanna be notified when I drop that video and when that comes out, go ahead and click that bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.